Hey, are all of Superman's body parts made of steel? Whoopsies is the one word you don't want to hear at a nuclear plant. Do is the one word for you know who. And the only word you need to know for the next half hour is slice. Covering all the news from every dark corner of the universe. SliceofSciFi.com Hey, greetings everyone to another Slice of Sci-Fi. I'm Michael R. Menengay. I'm Noah Richman. I'm Ben Raginton. I'm Sam Roberts. I'm Keith Lane. I'm Megan Zier, and I spelled everyone's name right. Victory! We can stop now. (laughs) Okay, let's get to some news. Yeah, before it gets ruined. (laughs) Your news team is next. Superman, the man of steel. Mm -hmm. Even the name suggests greater strength than any man has ever possessed. I mean, every fiber of his body must be impervious to breakage. Perhaps even the hairs on his chinny chin chin. (laughs) Yes, indeed. This is a long standing debate and conversation for a long, long time. This can go many places, but the marketing geniuses at Gillette thought about it and last week unleashed a brilliant ad campaign that asks the centuries old question. Centuries? He's not even that old. Anyway, (laughs) how does the man of steel shave? Much less get a haircut. I already know the answer to that. So the first round of commercials, well, no spoilers, I don't. well, actually, there's several several things. So, yeah? yeah. Okay. So we've, we've got some clever celebs like Bill Nye the Science Guy, um, Jamie and Adam from the Mythbusters, mm-hmm. Kevin Smith, and this one from, oh, Mayim Bialik, who plays Amy on The Big Bang Theory. Hi, I'm Mayim Bialik. I'm an actress. I've got a PhD in neuroscience, and I love comics. In the world of Superman, one minute he's got a full-on beard, the next he's clean-shaven. How did that happen? What a lot of people don't know is that a tremendous amount of very progressive research is being done in the field of Kryptonian genetics. Most of the research involves learning about the structure of the proteins that are holding the hair follicle in place, specifically the enzymes that can denature those proteins. They've been able to isolate these enzymes, place them in a carrier, in this case, a lotion. It penetrates the skin, releasing their hold on the follicle. Superman then is shaving just like any other guy. It's allowed for a tremendous amount of of crossover. It's reported that there are some prominent Hollywood actresses who are interested in having this kind of technology available on a larger scale. One of the side bonuses is that this lotion smells really good and therefore Superman smells really good. How does the man of steel shave the enzymatic follicle denaturation theory? Vote for my theory at howdoesheshave.com. And the cool thing about this is that there's a bunch of them up there. And actually, I like Kevin Smith's idea. It's actually one of the most creative ideas that I've seen yet. Go see that. Go look at that video. Well, the thing that kills me is that I actually really, really do know how this happens because it's in the freaking comic book. I however, know. however, I Hang would on, say that he talks about it. And I he like doesn't mimes. Buy it. I like mimes. Uh, uh, Mime I like her. her I love uh, you, Blossom. I like what she had to say better. <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, the the one that you're talking about, and that's with the mirror and the no the, he no no oh no that's okay. not that's it. a different one no. Okay, well, there you go. You know what? Check it out. It's it's definitely a, a, it's a cool program. It's a really cool promotion that Gillette came up with. Ingenious. I oh, mean, yeah. the people who created this, was just, that was just brilliant. Hopefully awesome. they got paid lots of money. Yeah, <laughs> truly. Because they deserve it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Slice, it's Mike from Des Moines. I just got done watching the new Star Trek movie, and I'm really depressed. Uh-oh. What are they going to find that damn dog? <laughs> That's what oh. I came to see. Admiral Archer's no dog. dog. Yes. <laughs> Just saying, I want to find the dog. Yeah, Admiral the prize Archer's beagle. Prize beagle. Yeah. Where is he? Hmm. Anyway, Interesting. I don't know, but Scotty still stop. feels bad about it. <laughs> Well, you, there you go. I, I, I don't know. Where is the dog at? Well, maybe the dog came back in between movies. It could be. You never know. 
Well, American Horror Story has added Emma Roberts to the upcoming third season of the show. Now, some of us might not know who she is. She, uh, well, you might know her from some family-friendly films like Hotel for Dogs, mm, Aquamarine, wow. Valentine's Day, Nancy Drew, Grand Champion. Nancy Drew, that's Wild it. Chi- yeah, Nancy Drew. <laughs> Wild Child, Winning Season, The Fight Before Christmas, Spy Maid. How can I get the feeling none of these are ringing a bell for you? No, they're well, really not. Just, let whatever. me put it this way. She happens to be the daughter of Eric Roberts and the niece of Julia Roberts. Oh, right. there we go. She yeah. looks, that makes sense. Yeah. She looks like Julia That makes Roberts. sense now. Mm-hmm. Now I know who she is. There Not is a really. bit of a family resemblance. <laughs> yes. Well, she'll join previously announced Oscar winner Kathy Bates. I really like that. This mm-hmm. cast this year is the cast, phenomenal. It's just, it's just off the rocker. Wow. Jessica Lange, Sarah Paulson, Lily Rabe, Frances Conroy. I love her. Mm. Uh, Tessa Farmiga. 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 Angela Bassett. Patty Lupone. Oh. Patty Lupone in American Horror Story. Oh, right. wow. wow. Do these people know? It's going to turn into a <laughs> musical. I love it. <laughs> and Gabri um, Sibide. Okay. From Precious for- from the movie Precious. Oh, of course. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, they'll they'll be all be in for season three, and reportedly Emma's going to she will be playing a self-involved party girl named Madison. Uh, anyway, American Horror Story is going to air later on FX this year. It'll be the upcoming third season. Oh, it's going to be called Coven. That'll be the overall That's season why we name. we have maybe all the fabulous ladies. Maybe they're all witches. I don't hey, know. Hey, I hey, so. Hey, you know. Your guess, I'm, ex- I'm excited about this one. <laughs> Your guess is good as mine, but if you got a guess... Please share it with us. And how can they do that, Mikey? Why, they can call the numbers 206-339-TREK. That's 206-339-8735. Or you can use our awesome iPhone app. Definitely Yay. use that. Uh, it's it's It really is um, amazing sure the stuff that we to get. do it this way. Landscape, not this please, way. people, not portrait. This way. Landscape. Yeah, it makes, it makes my life easier if you use it landscape. Mm-hmm. Uh, just and it's like, all about Uncle Mike. Just like this. Hey, Slice of Sci-Fi crew, Moldy Squid here again. I was listening to the most recent podcast from Slice of Sci-Fi, and Noah had expressed dismay at not being able to find a public domain version of, col- of Lovecraft's collected works. Cthulhu Chick has managed to put together an excellent collection of his original short stories in both EPUB and Moby, and it's available on her website, CthulhuChick.com. She's done an excellent job in correcting the text, making sure that all the typos are removed, and it's a wonderful resource if you're looking for a collection of Lovecraft's original short stories, all the way back from 1917 to his last published work. One little thing about my feedback, it looks like the video was a bit glitchy. It was much more terrible and horrifying in its original form, so hopefully the viewers got that. Anyway, Molly Squid, signing off. That was awesome. I <laughs> yeah. love Cthulhu. That's not Absolutely. ever getting old. I, did, I, I checked I, I'm, I'm on Amazon, going to too. The they have the collected works on Amazon for like 99 mm-hmm. cents. So. Yeah, there but it's go. not free. Well, no, 99, 99 cents. cents. My lord. Uh, 99 <laughs> cents is a lot of money, you guys. Come on. For it's some 99 people, it pennies. Is. My 99 God. cents. Oh, no. Some I'm, people, it is. I, I'm, I'm checking Cthulhu Chick right now. <laughs> right. This, this uh, all stems back to our original conversation is why isn't Cthulhu really identified more in the movies? And it really is, it really is prevalent. I mean, it, it's crazy how much... He is out there, but nobody actually speaks his name. There is name. some sort of secret cult of Cthulhu uh-huh. conspiracy reason for it. I am convinced. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and and Woot has a, a well on the day of this taping. Woot had a shirt that Cthulhu hears a who or what was it? Cthulhu hears a who. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cthulhu hears a who. Oh, I love it. it. No, the Cthulhu hears the call. That's what it was. Oh, oh the Dr. call of Cthulhu. I like Cthulhu hears a who. I like Cthulhu hears a who. I'm a little no, bummed no, right now, Keith, that it's not Cthulhu Here's a Who. Right. Yeah. Say, they, they, no, oh, there's a I want that book. There, there's a mashup I never considered before. Like, what kind of rhymes does Dr. Seuss come Love up with? Love Cthulhu. Yeah. Yeah. Cthulhu. And a Hulu. <laughs> well, we actually have some, more, we have some more comments on this, actually. Hey, guys. It's Matt in Washington, D.C. I was listening to your discussion of all of uh, Cthulhu's uncredited appearances yes. throughout recent uh, genre and popular television. And I was surprised that you missed Game of Thrones. Mm. Uh, the mm. drowned god, oh. the, uh, the mm. deity for the Iron right. Islanders, That's uh, right. is mm. referred to, he's called the drowned god. He lives under the ocean, and whenever they talk about him, they say, what is dead may never die. Right. So, yeah. I mean, that's, they don't call him Cthulhu, but I think that's could a pretty be. obvious. I'm guessing he has tentacles. George R. R. Martin. 
Absolutely. Yeah, good I mean. one. Hey, Slicers. It's Will, a.k.a. Sci Fantasy, out of New York. And on the topic of Cthulhu and why he isn't name-checked, well, one of them might be my field of expertise. I believe that the Call of Cthulhu and a lot of Lovecraft's early stories are out of copyright, but I wouldn't be surprised if some of the later ones are in are still under copyright, and that's why they aren't being used. That so, could be. That kind of explains that. Specifically, as the Pacific Rim, though, that's not a Cthulhu story. That's either, depending on how you look at it, a kaiju giant monster mm-hmm. Godzilla yeah. type yeah. story. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Well, more centrally, it's anime. It is. No, it's Gen- very much anime. The totally. Daigon, yeah, giant robot fighting alien monsters who ravage Tokyo. Believe me, I've seen this story done a thousand times. Very anime. And some of them yeah. were good, and some of them weren't, and it looks like Del Toro's will be good. It does. It looks like a big giant live action anime, but if you think about it, the concept of these creatures that come from the deep and are like monsters and like, you know, that's. Mm-hmm. It's, it shares some cthulhu origins there. Absolutely, absolutely. And on that note, I think it's time to uh, take a little break and uh, do some Flight Test Land. News from Flight Test Land. Good evening, Slicer. Sean Remembers with your News from Flight Test Land. Another edition. Well, Northrop Grumman's uh, UAV ISR division was not to be outdone by the UCAV division's first carrier launch of the uh, X-47 by launching this week, by launching two days later the M- first MQ-4C Triton. As you can see here on the video, it's very similar to the RQ-4B Global Hawk used by the Air Force, but this is the Navy-specific version. Now, this is the Navy-specific, folks, not naval eyes. doesn't take off and land from carriers. This will do, short, this will do uh, patrols on the, off the coast for drug interdiction and that kind of job. Now, the, f- the flight was a short for the Global Hawk type aircraft of 80, 80 minutes long where it got to about 20,000 feet before coming in for a landing. Now normally these things fly for up to 24 hours and at altitudes up to 10 miles, so over 50,000 feet. And here you see it's coming in for landing. Kind of like the naval livery, livery on here and says to the straight gray on the, Amer- on the Air Force one. It's got a whole new set of uh, sensor packages, and they're going to be performing these flights out of Palmdale, California for a while until they finally send it out to Pax River, uh, Ver- Virgin- Virgin- uh, Pax River, where it'll get final approval flights. Thank you, and uh, Sean from Edwards out. Very cool. Wow, he's I knocking these out of the park. I love that he's sending these video elements. Absolutely, know, really that's nice. just great. Absolutely, it's it's cool stuff, and keep them coming, Sean. They're they're they looking look great. great. Thank yep. you very much. So next up, once again, your tax dollars are being used for cosplay. Yeah. <laughs> is this cool. a great country or what? I what a it. country. Yeah. So another <laughs> governmental agency has been busted for using Star Trek in a training video. It's like an epidemic. This time, it is the San Onofre Nuclear Generating Station in Southern California. The video was created in 2010 as an instructional safety video, and it involves employees from the plant getting dressed up as Star Trek characters. <laughs> Now, this is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> oh, um, God. There's uh, some... Be- Actually, it's it's pretty well done. It yeah. <laughs> looks so I'm, SNL. I'm, I'm very pro this. I don't care. I'll, I'll spend money, money on yeah, it. I don't I care. Don't, what the hell? I, Even I if it's the IRS, I, I don't care. I'm not too... Yeah, yeah. so... Well, yeah, here's this the one's thing. not the IRS. But. Yeah, this oh, one's the nuclear power plant, but I was thinking one. the IRS one, too. So here's the thing. Now, we at Slice try not to use the word oops and nuke in the same sentence. Okay, but here's the big oops. The video was never meant for public consumption. Oops. Until an employee leaked it to the media. Of course they did. Yeah, it probably doesn't help matters that the plant has been under public scrutiny after environmental activist group Friends of the Earth. They published a photo of a leaky pipe at the plant being held up with masking tape, plastic bags, and blue handles. (laughs) Nice. They work at the Springfield Nuclear Power Plant. Yes! 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 That's a serious oops. Uh, The Nuclear Regulatory Committee has looked into the video, but didn't cite the plant for any violations. The video was meant to emphasize three-way communication, explains the NRC spokesman. That's where an officer requests something, the person responds back saying what the request was, and the first person confirms it by repeating it. Adding, since it was filmed in a simulator, there was no safety issue. Oh, 
okay. I don't know then. that I object. I really, I mean, I don't care. No, no, it's, no. I don't care. I, I guess if they're this. spending if the, the money shtick. on the video instead of fixing that leaky pipe, that's a problem. No, that, Maybe. Yeah. But if they're gonna make it anyway, and the Star Trek shtick makes it more memorable, so yeah, it penetrates. To, exactly. If they have to make a safety video, hey, have fun with it. Yeah. Well, uh, what I'm wondering is where are they figuring the costs are on this thing? Is it the time that they've taken away from doing their regular job? That's to a spend problem. On this. That's a problem. There may, be a may training, be there may be a training department and this is their responsibility or it may be right. supposedly like a portion of somebody's job. Exactly. I mean, lots of organizations have training departments that create educational content. That's not an unusual thing. Yeah, if right. this all falls within that 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 department, yeah. where mm-hmm. then, then I don't have a problem with it. But yeah, if they're actually siphoning time and resources from like uh, ma- maintenance, for example, where well, then is I got it? a problem. Then they got a problem, exactly. Right. So mm, I don't know. What do you folks think? You know, we can say this every week, but uh, what do you think? It's all, you know, we want to hear your feedback. Absolutely. Hey, Slicers, this is Trampus. Just wanted to weigh in on the fourth freaking attempt at a D&D movie. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Please just let this die. Please. No, and we can't. Failed Why would we once, do that? Twice, three times already. I want to see him do it right. Uh, I, I do think, think so, that there the is one. something to be made from D&D. It's just they're looking in the wrong place. They need to get into the settings where the story is. Oh, Dragonlance. Yes. I mm-hmm. agree with Noah. They need to get into Dragonlance yes. and the Forgotten Realms and, you know, maybe some Dragonlance. I could be biased, of course. Uh, Murder Wise, Tracy Hickman, good stuff. Mm-hmm. How about some uh, Ed Greenwood? And you know that Ari Salvatore made this little uh, character <laughs> called Dristo Erden. Yeah. Yes. I think he's kind of popular. That would so be excellent. what do you guys excellent. think? What would you like to see in a and d movie? Oh, I, you know, we well, there's a lot of conversations about Salvatore's character actually coming to life. That would be fantastic. Yeah. Noah? You? Yeah, well, <laughs> I, I mean, the thing that I was, was going to say is just, you know, growing up playing d and I just remember playing those modules um, and of course, I'm going back to uh, probably earlier than I should even say, but you know, <laughs> um, playing those modules in like the you know the the 1980s, and just thinking, you know, if anybody took this experience we're having right now mm-hmm. and just put it on screen, it would be huge. Yeah. But, but Keith, yeah. weren't you a D and D player in your youth? Yes, I was. And so, what would you like to see in a movie? You know, I don't know anything about the the original one that they did, but. It doesn't matter. It could it be any crappy. of the you incarnations. Don't want to know. Yeah. I, I mean, what do I want to see? My, yeah. yeah. What would you like to see in a D&D movie? Um, really good uh, plot. Good luck with that. You know, and, and interaction of the characters. And, I don't know. What about Ravenloft? Well, actually, I, mean, I, I with, like the interaction. With what's popular nowadays, I think that would um, kind of work maybe mm-hmm. forgetting because the key with anything like this is its niche and you have to get it to appeal to a broader audience in order for it to be successful which the first star trek reboot did so you have to get get something that doesn't only appeal to the folks like us yeah well and actually if you really want to get right down to it pathfinder is really who's been doing everything right mm-hmm. pathfinder had enough money behind them that they could produce their own movie kind of like the way marvel is producing their own oh that's where I think you'd actually see the breakthrough of showing yeah. people you have these years and years of unbelievable creativity, so much, you know, mm-hmm. so much imagination and creativity that people have put into these products and it's just never made it to the screen. Right. And, and, and there is just a serious dearth of good fantasy on the big screen. And right. Game of Thrones has proved that it can cross over from your typical fantasy nerd, small audience to mm-hmm. regular people enjoying it if you do it right. And so the, it's ripe out there mm-hmm. for something to hit big and for right. fantasy to be the next big thing in movies. But it does have mm-hmm. to start with good plot, like he right. said, good characters, right? And there is so much rich source material. Oh, my God. Absolutely. Don't the, screw it up, the people. The D&D universe is so Don't screw it up. They so should big. do D&D I mean, Worlds instead like, of Kindle Worlds. It was three books originally, right. and then they added what was it, five more. I had all of them. It was yeah. like, my God, how, yeah. many, how many pieces can you have moving parts? Yeah, right. Exactly. Well, let's do some multiverse. Yes, please. Covering all the news throughout time and space, this is the Multiverse News. Good evening, I'm Lance Neutron, and this first story is for Ben. Since the early days of the space program, the main barrier to interstellar travel has been the vast distances between stars. While that may change now that a group of physicists and rocket scientists have developed a space engine they are calling the Lindelof Drive. 
The Lindelof Drive works by creating plot holes big enough to fly a spaceship through any kind of barrier. In tech news, as expected, the adult entertainment industry has embraced Google Glass, and word has it that one company is working on a companion device called Google Wood. It doesn't say what it does here. In comics news, the popular Masters of the Universe comic will soon get a spin-off called Servants of the Universe. You can be the first to get your hands on a copy, free with any purchase at Gimpy Subs. I, I guess it's a sandwich shop, though. I don't know why a sandwich shop sells dog collars. Has Sweet Leaf been editing these stories? Because it, this is a little, um... Go on to the next thing? Okay. And now we're gonna try a brand new segment we're calling... Crowdsource News! Whoa! Thanks, guys. Crowdsource News is when... You're welcome! We really appreciate you coming in to do this. Crowdsource News is... It was fun! I'm glad, but you guys can go now. Okay! Crowdsource news is where we... Oh, they're really gone. In this segment, we present news stories from some of our friends in independent media. With the news that the new Marvel Shield TV show has been greenlit, inside sources are reporting that several executives at the Fox Network have resigned and are trying to get hired at ABC. One exec was quoted as saying, We don't feel like we're really earning our paychecks unless we're canceling a Joss Whedon show. That story comes to us from Brent at the AB Conversation podcast. And finally, a multitude of women of varying ages are suing Wolverine for child support, but he refuses to pay. When asked why, Wolverine claimed that he had a vasectomy in 1958, long before he was aware that his healing factor worked everywhere. That story comes to us from Gord, the cartoonist from MightyWombat.com and the BoneBat podcast. That's the news, and we take you back to Draco Vista Studios, where I think Professor Adamek is going to explain to us why cold fusion is so cold. <sighs> All right, we got time for just one more story here, and we got to call it for the day. All I got to say is, don't! <laughs> the fictional home of Homer, Marge, Lisa, Bart, and Maggie is about to become a reality. I know. Is this cool or yeah. what? Don't! Universal Studios <laughs> theme park in Orlando will build a real-life version of Springfield from the popular animated series of The Symptoms. Uh, Simpsons. Oh I can't gosh. wait to see this. I'm going to move in. I know. Universal officially announced this week that they're expanding the area around The Simpsons right in Orlando. Now, Universal, they've got... Huge tracts of land where they could easily develop something like this. So this is huge really great. Huge tracts of land. Yeah, so anyway, uh, sorry. they're yeah they're uh, going to include an entire area that mimics oh the gosh. streets of Springfield. Oh my oh! gosh! Some of the attractions will include a crusty burger, a lard lad donuts, and oh! of course Moe's Tavern. Oh! Of course, a Moe's Tavern. There will also be a Kang and Kodos themed attraction. Don't don't. You know, according to Fox, where everything is fair and balanced, The ah. Simpsons are one of the greatest TV franchises of all times, and now the longest-running scripted series, lasting over 20 years. 20 it's just hilarious that a show... I know. Isn't, it's insane that a show of this level of success is instantly identifiable by words that aren't really words like... Mm, and... <laughs> <laughs> no, truly. I really enjoyed that story, yeah. didn't you, Ben? It yes, I did. Awesome. I was waiting to do that one. Can't it you tell? Is awesome stuff. <laughs> oh, I thought we were only doing one more story. You said we only had time oh, for one more. Well, we can Marvel talk about Studios this really owns quick. him. No, 20th Century Fox owns him. No, Marvel. No, Fox. Well, apparently both Marvel and 20th Century Fox can legally use Quicksilver as part of the upcoming Avengers and uh, X-Men projects. Confusing. Okay. Yeah. And while some of us hope this might open a door to epic crossovers between no. Marvel and X-Men universes, it appears mm. likely that instead audiences will get two different versions Confusing. of the same Oh, character. that I don't like. Oh. Yeah. I don't like that. According to HitFix, Brian Singer has designed a sequence that he feels only works with Quicksilver, and Joss Whedon feels that there is a pressing reason for Quicksilver to show up in the Avengers mm -hmm. 2. 
Okay. And so what we're going to see is a legally negotiated standoff in which we'll get two totally different versions oh, of exactly. one character. That's going to be yeah. bad. Well, the only thing that saves us again is Avengers 2 is a long ways off, so maybe there might be some negotiation where they could actually cross it over instead of having two different ones. I don't know. Well, because I don't know. It said, what, what the story says is while they may act like things are amicable in public, hit fix sources say otherwise. There may mm. be some nasty tug, tug of warring going on behind the screens. And Marvel has larger plans for the character, though, and wants to use him for more than just one action sequence. Mm-hmm. Um, this is the first time this has happened, and there's still time for Fox to blink. If they push forward and allow Singer to include the character, there's a chance they're burning down any future cooperation with Marvel, who have proven themselves to be kind of rough negotiators and are not afraid to flex their muscles. So um, we can also tell you that fans are hoping to see Spider-Man in an Avengers cameo or returning to Marvel Studios fold will be disappointed as well. While Spidey can cross over on the comics page, Sony is not going to allow that to happen on the silver screen. They want to keep their moneymaker all to themselves. Mm -hmm. They said last week they will never allow rights to Spider-Man to revert back to Marvel. Wow. Yeah. Ouch. (sighs) You know, it's it's sad because there's so much potential here Mm -hmm. uh, to to bolster both properties in both camps Mm -hmm. by allowing the crossovers to happen. Mm -hmm. They just have not figured that the hell out yet. Well, no. it's like kids that haven't learned how to share. You can. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Exactly. It really is. So, anyway, that is going to do it for this show. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Don't, this has been a lot of fun. To, don't forget to check in on sliceofsci-fi.tv for Slice of Sci-Fi shorts on Wednesday and Thursday with Emma Green. Thank Absolutely. you, Absolutely. Thank you. And uh, we will be back with more very soon. Just keep watching the inner tubes. <laughs>